their regard. The election is days away, and on the left and right, both black and white, militias have sprung up all over America, and they say they're ready for battle. These next days are we're going to be uh, packed with violence. But is America really about to be dragged into a civil war over the soul of the nation? People are going to die, bro. People are going to die. I don't know who's going to be. Portland has become a magnet for street-fighting right-wing groups and their brutal clashes with anti-fascist counter-protesters known as Antifa. Well, we just take precautions to protect ourselves. Meet Timothy Ryerson. Apparently, a bail bond agent. He's also a member of Patriot Prayer, a right-wing group locked into constant confrontations with anti-fascist protesters, many of which find their way online. AR, that was really cool. Are you going to kill me with your AR? Get the f back, you dumb. Get the f back. Follow always anti-fascists on Twitter, and you'll see exactly why I feel it's important to carry something like this. We don't show up to their events, but they seem to want just love showing up to our peaceful events and harassing us. But online, some of Portland's far-right activists are more death threat than peace. You're going to be getting knives put into your throat. You're going to be getting bullets put to your head if you don't stop this with us. And here, a known right-wing agitator, Alan Swinney, points a gun on a Portland street aimed at counter-protesters, some from Antifa. Patriot Prayer held joint rallies with the notorious Proud Boys, President Trump suggested to stand by in the first presidential debate. And in Portland, Antifa says its right-wing groups have been stoking the violence over the past few years, right up to today. All right. God still speak through visions and dreams. Yes, he does. I was just uh, scrolling through Facebook today and I saw that. And it reminded me of something. Some things God talked to me about back in 1994. 1994, that's a long time ago. It's about 26 years ago. And uh, uh, back then, <coughs> back then God was talking to me a lot about uh, the days we're in right now. And, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, they're getting ready for violence. Uh, but anyway, <coughs> back in 1994, My life was very difficult back then. Really hard times. But God was with me and he was talking to me about some things. And he was showing me back then that America is going to experience a civil war. I don't know if this is it right now or not. But we're going to experience a civil war. And... Uh, it's going to actually lead up to anarchy. Okay, we're going to experience anarchy in this country. And as I've you already heard me say many times that uh, during during the time of anarchy, America will be bombed and invade and invaded. Okay. Uh, now back then. <clears throat> he showed me something. He showed me what's actually behind these wars. Uh, one night I went to sleep and um, he put me in a dream. God put me in a dream. And I saw this angel, I didn't know he was an angel at the time I saw him, but later I realized he was an angel. But he was a fallen angel. 
and his upper body was very strong, very masculine, very muscular. But the lower part of his body was, from his waist on down, was looked really weak and small. It just didn't fit the upper part. His his lower part didn't fit with the upper part. But anyway, I noticed he was also he was also extremely beautiful. He was extremely beautiful, and he was so beautiful. I was just captivated by his beauty. I couldn't believe how beautiful. Anybody, I couldn't believe anybody could be that beautiful. <clears throat> and I was just captivated by his beauty. And I remained there mesmerized just by his beauty. I couldn't move. I couldn't believe such beauty. And I heard the Lord's voice which was the only thing that broke that spell broke my spell from being mesmerized by him I heard the Lord vo the Lord's voice he said don't be mesmerized he used one word I don't know what that word was but it was one word that meant don't be mesmerized, hypnotized, uh, enthralled, or, or captivated by his beauty. He used one word to describe all those words. But don't be mesmerized, hypnotized, captivated by his beauty. The Lord said, because he is a monster. That's what he said. And I was, I was captivated by his beauty he was just I, I, I couldn't believe anybody anything could be that beautiful but the Lord said he is a monster and he said you will be better off in the jaws of a dinosaur Tyrannosaurus Rex than to be in the hands of this monster and the next thing I knew I was in some place I was in some place and I was experiencing emotional pain, weeping, gnashing of teeth, weeping and wailing. And this emotional pain was so painful, it felt physical. It was so painful, emotions, emotionally. And I came out of the vision. Now, before I went, what brought me to this vision, I might as, let me back all the way up. What got me into this vision was I was walking down the street. And I was very angry at God. I was very angry at God. I was in rebellion. My pride had taken me over. My pride had got the upper hand on me. I was in rebellion against God. And I was very angry at Him. Because, and the reason why I was very angry at Him, because things were not going the way I had hoped, I had expected. And I wanted it. I was having financial, serious financial problems. Serious mar marital problems. Serious family problems. Uh, it was just, even, even the church, I had problems there at the church. Uh, with the leadership. I mean, there was just no, nothing was working at all. Nothing. And I was surprised. I mean, I was just really surprised. I was thinking, Lord, I'm, I'm trying to do what's right. What is the problem? Why aren't you helping me? 
But what well, little did I know that I was off course. I was off course. I wasn't in I wasn't flowing in his will. I was trying to do something I wanted. Okay? I was trying to do something I wanted. And by doing this, it threw everything everything in my life was off. Everything. And to this day, man, I suffer. I suffer because of that. Uh, but I have the victory. I got the victory. But still, I suffer from the aftermath, aftermath of those problems 26 years later. But I got the victory. He promised me victory 10 years before that. Ten years before that incident, he promised me victory. But nevertheless, I still uh, uh, suffer from those, from that moment, from those days I experienced uh, in '94. And so, but anyway, I was walking down the street. I was very angry at God. And I told him, I told him with a loud voice, I said, if I didn't fear going to hell, I wouldn't do anything you said. That's what I told him. I said, I wouldn't do anything you said. If, if, if it wasn't for the fear of going to hell, I wouldn't do anything you said. I wouldn't do anything you would tell me. But see, <clears throat> As I said, I was off course. <clears throat> I had gotten off course. <clears throat> so I blamed God for it. I blamed Him for it. And I blamed Him because I felt He was totally responsible because He initiated everything. Okay, I felt He initiated everything. So that's why I felt like I could blame Him for it. But that's not how it works. <laughs> That's just not how it works. So, but anyway, I went home and I laid down and I had that dream of that angel. And at the end of that dream, after I came out of that dream from all this experience and all that emotional pain, I heard the Father, I believe it was the Father, speak to me in a very a strong, firm tone. He said, you better watch yourself. That's been a long time ago, but I remember that. That's what he said. He said, you better watch yourself. Now, I went for days thinking about that, that dream. And I kept asking the Lord, Lord, what was that? Anyway, this, this angel, he would... He would follow me. He would stalk me. Uh, and he would talk. And I know that, you know, I would be called a schizophrenic for saying I heard the voice of an angel, a fallen angel, uh, talking to me or um, contacting me. Or, hey, you would just say, so, y'all, you were just schizophrenic. Listen. I know the difference in schizophrenic and actually hearing the spiritual world. I know the difference. But this angel, he would stalk me days after I had that vision, that dream. And he would talk. He would say things like, he would thread me all the time. As I'm making this video, I can feel him. I still can feel him. It's still it's been 26 years later. But I can feel him. I can feel him watching still. I can feel him watching still. But he would talk. He would threaten me all the time. You're not going to He would tell me, you're not getting away with it. But, I, but God promised me victory 10 years before I encountered him. So I, my, my faith and trust is in the Lord. 
Anyway, I t- I t- several weeks went by, and I asked, finally asked, I said, Lord, who was this angel? What did he want? And he told me, this is what he told me, y'all. This is what he told me. This is what he told me. This is what the Lord told me. He said, that is the angel of pride. See, I didn't know I was dealing with pride. I didn't know pride had me. I didn't know pride had a hold of my life, had a hold of my, my was destroying my marriage. I didn't know pride was destroying my finances, destroying my jobs, every job I got. Pride. Pride is not just a feeling, it's a person, y'all. He's a person, and he sees you. And he know every one of his followers, he know where they're at and what they're doing at all times. God let me, he let me actually experience looking through the eyes of pride. And when pride looks at, pride know where all his boys are at. God said, he is the angel of pride. And then he said, he's the prince of thugs. That's what he said. He said, now you know God hates pride, don't you? God hates pride. Pride is an abomination to God. But God said this angel is the angel of pride and he's the prince of thugs. And listen, he's in all of his thugs. All those men out there, uh, they're, in, they're out in pride. The police officers that's killing innocent people is pride. Pride is the most powerful force in the kingdom of darkness. The only thing that can counter pride is love. That's the only thing. Now that's another teaching subject altogether. But the only thing that can counter pride is love and humility. If faith can't counter pride, prayer can't counter pride, not unless you're praying in humility. Uh, nothing else can counter pride except love and humility. Okay, I can show you that in the scripture. In, in uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians 13, I think it is. Okay, but listen, let me go on here. He said, he's, this is the angel of pride. He's the prince of thugs. And God showed me that this angel of pride, he's planning. I, I, one time, I, one time, it's like I, I was walking down the street when this happened. I had this vision. It's like I was, I was in the spiritual realm, and I could see him. He was making plans for something. And I remember, this was back in 1994, I remember him, I remember, it looked like I was over St. Louis. Okay, now if any of y'all, if you all had got my book, my book is called God Still Speak Through Visions and Dreams by Thomas Rohn. I, I wrote this in my book. Uh, looked like in this vision I was over St. Louis and something happened in St. Louis. And it did. You remember back, I don't know, what was it, 10 years ago, 8 years ago? Uh, we had the Ferguson, in Ferguson, uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And that kind of what set things off back then. And it's been going ever since. And I remember when I was in the spiritual realm, it was like I broke into this angel of pride. I broke into his office and I, and I saw his plans. I saw his, his work. I saw what he was planning and what he was doing. And I saw St. Louis which was Ferguson. I also saw Kansas City, Kansas. I also saw Detroit. I saw, and many other cities. Chicago. There are many other cities I saw. He's planning something, you all. Listen, this is pride. Okay? This is pride. The white man want to keep the black man down and walk on him because of pride. The black man want to get up and show the white man, hey, you know better than me. It's all because of pride. Okay? The Muslims and the Ku Klux Klan, they're full of pride. Alright? But when I, in the spiritual realm, I broke into the pride's office. I broke into his office and I saw his plan, everything he was laying out to do. And this is what he's planning to do. He's planning on creating riots, which he's doing it right now. And this is what I saw back in 1994. I saw riots all over this country. This, he's doing this. Pride is doing this. Riots were all over this country. People were rioting. But now what he's trying to do, this is what he wants. 
He want the lives of men. He want them to kill each other. Because he want their lives. Now what is he going to do with their lives? Here's something we don't understand about the spiritual realm. You remember I told you in my other videos there are places in the spiritual world where human body parts are actually sold and traded? Okay. Well, pride, he needs humans. He needs he need the strength. This is why he used mostly men because he used, he wants the strength of these men. This is why he keep black men killing each other killing each other all the time because when he have these men kill each other he 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 uh he take their souls or their spiritual bodies and somehow he's able to take the strength out of that say if an 18 year old boy get out there and get killed pride will take that strength out of that body and attribute it to himself now he has the strength and the longevity of an 18 year old boy, 18 year old man. This is what he's planning. And he's, he's planning on getting thousands, thousands of young men's lives. Well, what happened is, <clears throat> this is, this is what happens in the spiritual realm. He can take five or six men, take their lives, and take the strength from their lives and apply it to himself. He would be five or six men stronger than what he is. Okay? If he take ten men, he would be ten times stronger than what he is. Because he will take the strength of those men and attribute it to himself. This is what he's planning. I saw this back in 1994. Okay? Pride is going to cause rides. Prince of Thugs going to cause rioting, rioting and anarchy. He's called he's called Pride and the Prince of Thugs and ain't fallen angel. And he want men and young men to kill each other because he want their lives. Now why do he want their lives? Why do he want this strength? Because in the in the spiritual realm he has to fight. In the invisible world, he has to fight. He's got to fight the holy angels. So he's going to need strength to fight them. Where does he get the strength from? From the men that's killing them, each other down here. Y'all didn't know that, did you? I bet you have never heard that before. Remember in Genesis, I've mentioned this many times before. The scripture says, Dust will be the serpent's meat. Our dust will be the serpent's sustenance. We are created from the dust. The serpent has an appetite for dust. That's us. Just like we 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 we'll take a cow, and we will. Um, there, I heard there are over like two hundred medicines we can get from a cow. See, from the animals, we extract all type of things from them to make our life better. Well, fallen angels do the same thing with humans. They extract all kind of things from humans to make their life better. And one of the things they extract from the humans is strength. They got to get you to kill yourself, though, or somebody to kill you. So they keep everybody. This is what they do. Just like farmers, just like farmers, fatten their, fatten their uh, herd and fatten their livestock before the slaughter. You know, they fatten their pigs. They feed them real good. They fatten the pigs. They fatten the cows. They feed them real good. They fatten those turkeys before Thanksgiving. Well, pride does the same way with humans. See, we feed the livestock food, grain, grain, wheat, oats, and all that stuff. But pride, he don't feed us grain, wheat, and oats. You know what he feeds us to get us fat for the slaughter? He feeds us lies. He feeds us lies. They hate you. They don't like you. He feeds us pride. Ain't nobody going to punk me. Nobody going to punk me. Okay? He feed us pride. He feed us lies. He feed us deception. And he and he and he and he pump lies and deception in you, year after year after year after year, because he's preparing you for the slaughter. Did you know the Bible said, "Anger rests in the bosom of a fool." The wrath of God is coming on uh, the the angry person. The, 
in other words, an angry person, all he, all, the, all he can expect is wrath, judgment. Okay? Pride feeds you anger. He feeds you lies. He feeds you deception. He feeds you pride. He feeds you all that stuff. And he know where every one of you guys are that's full of pride. He know where you're at. Everyone is one time. The people say Satan can't be at one place at one time. Yes, he can. He's in. Some of them can. Some of those fallen angels can, but some of them can't. He know where every one of his boys at, his followers, his drug dealers. They belong to pride. Drug dealers belong to pride. Okay? So he fattened you up with all that, with lies, with deception, with pride, for the slaughter. Just like we fatten turkeys for Thanksgiving Day. Just like we fatten cows and all that for the slaughter. Okay? So listen. This is what's coming. God showed me this back in 1994, about 26 years. I think it was 26 years ago, right? And it's in my book I wrote, God Still Speak Through Visions and Dreams. It's in that book. I wrote it in that book. Okay, so he needs the strength. He got to get the strength from somewhere. See, fallen angels, they can't get strength from God anymore. So they got to get it from humans. We get our strength and stuff from animals and plants and all that. But they know how to watch Jupiter Ascending. Watch the movie Jupiter Ascending. Watch the movie Jupiter Ascending. It is very true. It's a science fiction movie, but it's a true science fiction movie. Okay, angels, they take the strength of humans. Okay, and the genes and all that stuff. Even for their own beauty. They, you would be surprised how beautiful you really are. God let me look through the eyes of pride at a woman here on earth that, that would not be considered very beautiful. You know how we look at some people and we don't think they're very beautiful. But I saw that woman through the eyes of pride, and pride knows that woman was very beautiful. Even though she didn't look very attractive to she didn't look very attractive to anybody. But you have a beauty on you that you cannot see, but pride sees it and he wants it. And this is around he this is the reason why he was so beautiful when I saw him, because he take he stole the beauty out of humans and he attributed it to himself. We do that with animal skin. With animal byproducts, we use their parts, body parts, and different whatnots to beautify ourselves, right? We take the fur off of foxes, the fur off of beavers, and we make ourselves look beautiful, and the eyelashes from a cow, and all kind of stuff. Okay, we, we, we do the same thing. Well, they do that with humans. Wow. I'm telling you, man, this is what's coming. And this is the reason why it's coming, because pride needs the strength too. He's gonna to have to fight he's gonna to have to fight in the spiritual realm against Michael, the archangel, and other angels, the holy angels that reside over the United States. He's gotta fight against him. Pride has got to fight against him, the holy angels that reside over the United States. So he's gonna need the strength. So he's gotta get a whole bunch of guys to kill himself. If he get a thousand guys to kill each other, well he can sap that he can he gonna he's gonna rake in the harvest. Remember the Bible tells us the harvest, a human harvest is coming and the angels are going to reap the harvest. Isn't that what the Bible said? The angels are going to reap the harvest. Human harvest is coming, just like a turkey harvest coming this month. Cow harvest coming later. We harvest corn every year. We harvest wheat every year. Humans are going to be harvested too. Okay? That's what's coming. Don't get in that stuff. Stay out of pride. You get in pride, he could take your life. Stay out of pride. He's a bum. Okay, he's a bum. But he's not to be toyed with. He is a worthy opponent. I remember I saw him in a vision, and I was, I was about to mock him. I was going to mock him. But the Holy Spirit said, don't do it. He is a worthy opponent. Do not play with... The only thing that can defeat pride is you got to walk in love. And if you walk in love, that's going to be... That's going to be a tremendous sacrifice it's not going to be easy the love walk is not easy it is not easy the true love walk in Christ is not easy do not get in pride this is what's coming I got to end this video real quick but I hope you understand what I'm saying all this stuff that's coming is caused by pride he wants to take life because he wants to contribute that life contribute that life to himself because he's going to need the strength to fight his war in the spiritual realm Okay, he's a bomb. 
Okay? All right, God still speaks through visions and dreams. Yes, he does. 